SCADA, or Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, serves as the backbone of efficient battery energy storage plant. It collects, processes, and displays site data from critical components such as the power conversion system, battery management system, transformers, protection relays, and the systems of electricity grid operators. With real-time insights into the performance of these vital assets, SCADA empowers both local and remote operators to make informed decisions, optimize operations, and maximize overall plant efficiency. Now let's dive into a live demonstration of SCADA in action, developed by our talented engineering team. What you're about to see is the real-time monitoring of a BEST system in a controlled lab environment. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content on SCADA, smart utilities, and innovative engineering solutions. Have thoughts or questions? Leave a comment below and we'll be happy to hear from you. Um, so this is the SCADA that I developed for the lab, which is a renewable energy systems integration lab. Best system comprised of two PCSs, two BMSs, two transformers, and it's connected up to a load bank. There's also a switch cabinet for switching points on and off, and two relays. The two relays are configured with DNP3, while all the other communications are set up through Modbus TCP. That the SCADA system can communicate with all the devices and their appropriate addresses. Another, uh, this I.O. list was created to be able to implement into GeoSCADA, including the engineering values we're provided in different states, and then also the testing, which is based on a Modbus simulator, was how all these points were tested, which I'll go through a little bit later when we actually look at the GeoSCADA. So from that, then I developed the interface which is comprised, this is the overview interface which shows the key information about each of the PCSs and the batteries, temperature of the transformers. But if a user per se wanted more information about the batteries, they can then click into the battery and it will open up a battery overview which gives a complete overview of what's involved in the batteries. So all the IOs associated with that, as well as the working status. This also applies to the PCSs, where more information provides the inputs, the analog inputs and analog outputs in the settings. The control words to understand each of the bits are tied into a tooltip, so it works. So it pops up with what each of the corresponding bits corresponds to in a label to try and save space and make it a bit more <coughs> compact. The solid boxes here are digital inputs based on these status words and then the outputs are toggleable buttons. So when they're red, their state's zero, but then they can be toggled to be green, which means they're on that corresponds to the output in the simulator, which can then they can be toggled back off. And similar for the inputs, if an input is received that different statuses will be displayed based on the list provided. So depend on which binary bit is true and display some statuses about the transformers. With the switches in the switch cabinet, these all correlate to the switches in the diagram displayed here. So if a, in this example, the grid switch is closed, it not only displays that here, but also this animation up here goes from open to closed. So the way I tested each of these values, I'll use the um, battery one um, SOC, which is the state of charge. Based on the engineering values, that percentage can be between zero and 100%. So if they say read in 101, it'll go pink to display that there's an error with this value it's beyond its designated range and it also will display an error down the bottom in the alarm section if this value is then pulled back within the range so to 
it'll start go green to indicate that it's back within its value and this alarm can then be acknowledged and it'll go back to a text. Um, so for testing all the points, I tested each side of the, so I went below the minimum value and then above the maximum value and checked that when I came back within range that the alarm was cleared. And similarly, if they try to enter a value that's outside the range, so we've got 100, so if I went 102, <coughs> we'll get warnings to say that we can't do that. Tries to show an overview of the um, information is the idea on this one, and then if any more information is required, clicking into these gives a complete overview of each minus the subsystem.